Hello and welcome to episode four. In the previous episode, we saw that blockchain technology has an enormous potential to enhance the way citizens, governments, and businesses interact. By enhancing trust between entities and improving the efficiency of operations. In this episode, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure, or EBSI, as we like to call it for short. And at the end of this episode, we will have covered the EBSI vision, why it's been created, who's working on it, how the infrastructure has been designed, what EBSI is trying to achieve, and what are the benefits for you. We'll also look at use cases and the EBSI roadmap, what citizens, businesses, and public administrations can do with EBSI in practice, as well as the use cases and features that are available in the first version of EBSI and what to expect from future developments. And finally, we'll look at how to get started and the services we have to support you. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start with the vision and the benefits of EBSI. Well, on April 2018, 27 member states, Norway and Liechtenstein, signed the European Blockchain Partnership, or the EBP Declaration. Since then, the countries have been working together on creating the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure. But why? What is EBSI trying to achieve? Well, EBSI aims to, first of all, enhance cross-border services provided by government to citizens and businesses, as well as cooperation between public authorities. EBSI needs to comply with the EU's digital regulations such as GDPR and EIDAS. EBSI will reinforce Europe's blockchain capacity and support use cases that enhance environmental and Green Deal policies. EBSI will also enhance cross-border citizens' and enterprises' mobility. The vision is for EBSI to become a network where European blockchain partnership members can use the EBSI as an element of their digital infrastructure. This means that EBSI will support the delivery of cross-border public services and connect to existing government applications. These services are based on use cases that are selected each year by the members of the EBP. The close cooperation between EBP members will mean that we avoid a fragmented approach and will ensure interoperability and the use of blockchain technology for the public good in Europe. So how does EBSI work? What does the architecture look like? Well, EBSI is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network of interconnected nodes. Most nodes will be operated by the member states. Some of these nodes will be able to validate and broadcast transactions that will update the ledger. Others will have more limited permissions. EBSI is designed as a permissioned public blockchain. Everyone can read the blocks but only some nodes, the validators, can write and validate them. In the end, all nodes will be synchronized, sharing the same state of the ledgers. The architecture of each node is composed of three main functional areas. So we have a set of three layers comprising components that together provide the main services that contain capabilities common to all use cases. The first, is the core services. These provide the connectivity to the blockchain networks and connectivity to off-chain storage. The second functional area is a layer of use cases that provides sample applications for each selected use case to showcase the functionalities and possible technical implementations and the use of the exposed services. And the final functional area is the layer of business applications this is not part of the EBSI infrastructure, but enables private and or public organizations to develop applications that connect to EBSI nodes and consume the exposed services, providing the option to reuse code from the sample applications. So what are the benefits for you? Well, by participating in the EBSI network, you can use the infrastructure and the available solutions to, for example, offer enhanced seamless services to citizens and companies across the EU. You can use it to enhance transparency and trust in public services. You can use it to simplify administrative processes and increase efficiency. And you can use it to increase data security and privacy. 
Okay, so now that we've covered the principles, let's move on to the use cases and roadmap, starting by taking a look at an illustration of what an EPSI journey might look like through the eyes of a user. Our user is called Ava. The first four use cases that were selected by the EVP will enable you to simplify administrative processes, increase efficiency, and instill trust in your citizens. These can be used to start designing your pilot with EBSI by reusing the open source code. Now, the first use case is the notarization of documents. Leverage the power of blockchain to create trusted digital audit trails automate compliance checks in time-sensitive processes, and prove data integrity. The second use case is European self-sovereign identity. Here, you can implement generic self-sovereign identity capabilities, allowing users to create and control their own identity without relying on centralized authorities. The third use case is diploma management. Give access to educational credentials controlled by citizens this will significantly reduce verification costs and improve authenticity and trust. And the final use case is trusted data sharing. Securely share data such as VAT identification numbers amongst customs and tax authorities in the EU. Now, the first version of EPSI has been released. At this stage, we consider it as a sandbox, meaning it's a space that you can use to experiment with practical use cases. It's an enabler, a set of sample applications that will hopefully inspire you. So what's the best way to get started? And what services do we have for you to help? Well, currently you've got three ways to get started with EBSI. First, you can take a citizen's journey and test the EBSI services yourself. This is a tool that will help you discover and understand EBSI services and functionalities by using them from a citizen's perspective. The second way you can get started is by deploying a blockchain node and connecting to the network. This will allow you to check if your infrastructure can support an EPSI node and help you identify any potential challenges. In this way, you can share your concerns with us and help us shape the future of EPSI. Finally, you can also prepare to integrate your applications with EPSI. In this way, you can make sure your applications and systems integrate with EPSI APIs and services as you would expect. Let's take a look now at how we can support you. Well, the EBSI team provides a set of services to help public administrations deploy a node or prepare for integration with EBSI APIs. Our services are essentially structured into two key categories, infrastructure services and supporting services. Within the infrastructure services, 
you'll find the EBSI version 1 sample applications with a demo and source code. You'll also find the first version of the EBSI APIs as well as the EBSI connectivity testing service. Within the supporting services, you'll find the EBSI service desk, a place to go and ask questions, the knowledge base, You'll also see elements of EBSI community management and of course, EBSI training services, which include things like this video. Okay, so let's wrap up this episode. What did we learn? Well, we learned about the vision and the benefits of EBSI. We learned about the use cases and the roadmap. And we learned how to get started and what are the services offered to you to help you do that. We hope you're inspired. We hope you've started to get an idea for your pilot so when you're ready, let's move on to the next stage where we're going to see how to design an EPSI pilot. I look forward to seeing you there.